WCW World Tag Team Champions first from Sweetwater, Texas, Barry Wintam. And his tag team partner is from Robbinsdale, Minnesota, Wood Hennig. This should be a great one because if you strip away the lumberjacks and you strip away the straps and the uncensored theme here tonight, you got four of the finest wrestlers in the world that can do it. Four men who certainly have a, a very uh, a hot issue between them, between the team. Now you have the Lumberjacks, and you make for even more intriguing what should be a great tag team match here at Uncensored. I think both of these tag teams really separated themselves from the field during the recently concluded WCW World Tag Team Title Tournament. This is actually a return match from last month's Super Brawl pay-per-view. The team of Wyndham and Hennig on that night were able to defeat Benoit and Malenko. The mat, that was where they had to wrestle twice in one night, Benoit and Malenko winning the first time. And then Wyndham and Hennig scoring a very dubious victory in the second matchup with Barry Wyndham using the belt right. off of his jeans to choke out Dean Malenko. And both of these men right here. Barry Wyndham, you don't have I manage Kurt father. I manage Kurt Hennig. Kurt Hennig's father, where are the X? Great tag team wrestler. So all their lives, they know about tag team wrestling, this team of Wyndham and Hennig. Yes. We're going to be bringing you this uncentered event leading up to the two greats of all time, Ric Flair and Hollywood Hogan for the world title in a cage career presidency of WCW all the line in one night. Right now the tag team title on the line now. Here, for you fans who've been following professional wrestling, probably to you, a lumberjack match with straps, nothing new. The lumberjacks on the outside are responsible for throwing the combatants back in the ring should they go on the outside, but also those straps can be used to inflict more punishment and what that does, that gives the wrestlers more incentive to get back in the ring even quicker. Tony, I'm not sure you noticed, but our camera just caught a great close-up of Kurt Hennig. And it appeared that Hennig winked down at Kendall Windham at ringside. Some kind of contact, eye contact was made between those two. Ah, there you go. That's one of the reasons you're the professor. You pick up on stuff like that, don't you? You're very observant there. He like sees Hennig. everything. Yes. He knows all. And things he doesn't see, he calls his friends and they see all. And he has a shredder. What's this? That's the enforcer. Iron Anderson. Not on our list to be out here, and, but of course, here's the mentor of the new horseman, so to speak. And the best friend of the president of WCW. And he's talking to Chris Adams. And he has spelled Chris Adams. He's got his own. Well, it's not such a bad idea. It sort of evens things up out of the with the Lumberjacks, doesn't it? Well, if you think it's a good idea, I think that Logan will come back to Barry Crawford. This may be what they need. And Wyndham and Hennig won nothing of it. And here's what the Lumberjacks are for. And believe me, you want to get back into the ring. I was in a match like this one time. As soon as you hit the floor, your mental, tell, your mental tells you you want to get some breath. You want to get your air back. When they start hitting those belts, you just start running. You don't know where you run sometimes. And the more you run, the more they whip you. You got to get back into the ring. Now, I'm sure someone like you fall on the floor, no one will want to hit you. I had two of them. Yeah, like, people come from the back yeah, with, with knocked, a belt to hit you Knocking each other over to get in a free shot. Now, it, it, you're right, though, Brain. It does bring more incentive to bring you back in the ring. Here we go. How about uh -oh. that uh, short left hand slap by Hennick. Hennick, such a pro, such a veteran. And he knew that was coming, and he doesn't care. He cared about that, so to speak. And here we go again. See how fast you get back in there? To the ropes. Oh, Hennig nosedives that time. And he goes out again. And he gets whipped again. Tag to BW. 
So, you know, what I did when I was involved in a match like this, I paid off two guys on the outside to keep the other guys away from me. And it worked for a while. So they double-crossed me, but then I didn't pay them, so you it didn't worked pay out. There, huh? We knew that story was on its way. That's the last time I'm going to have my brothers do anything to help me. Wyndham and Benoit in, and Big Barrett. Blocked by the Wolverine. We're not going to find any more fans in the victory than a Chris Benoit. And on Anderson, Norman smiling, and the Prince have been walking away. From the belts and the straps around the ring, they're tasting the impact of those knife edge chops from Ben Watts. I think I'd rather feel the belts than the knife edge chop from Ben Watts. And look at Malenko. Malenko has been so intense as well, and I think he and Ben Watts have been such a great fit as one of the top teams. Grinding up on Barry Wyndham. Wyndham's got him hot. All the way across, but Malenko landed on him. Wyndham goes down. Well, there's no place really to go. You don't want to stay in the ring and knock down. You certainly don't want to go outside. Great teamwork by the horsemen duo, Ben and Malenko. Two and only a two count. Referee Randy Anderson assigned to this one. And for Randy Anderson, these lumberjacks with belts helping him out a great deal. Making sure that action stays in the ring. Yes! Oh, great move and beating team from Barry Wyndham. He's so talented. He can be in different parts of the ring and just, he can miss a move and catch you doing two other, do two other things to you. He's so talented. Yeah, that's because really he's one of the quickest big men you'll ever find, Barry Wyndham. And of course, we talk so much about wrestlers who are can execute great moves. Bret Hart comes to mind, Ric Flair. And now on the other side. Yeah, did you notice though, Hennig that time purposely threw Benoit out to the floor, and probably no coincidence that he tossed him right down to Kendall Wyndham and friends at ringside. That's a smart move. Yeah, of course it is. I agree with that. If they're there, use them. Benoit just fired back. Benoit getting caught. Double teamed here. Wyndham grabs. Now let's see Randy Anderson and Dean Malenko having some words. Namely another team on the uh, double team on the other end. And again, back here they go. There's chaos there as well. Hey! Well, it may be a great move, but that's really not the idea of the match. The idea is to keep the competitors in the ring. As it turns out, Wyndham and Hennig are using the Lumberjacks to their advantage. Yes, they are, but and I'm not really backing up what Kendall Wyndham is doing, but it's his job as soon as someone comes out to whip them back in. So, within the rules, they're doing the right thing. Belly to back, center of the ring, great wrestling move, tag Barry Wyndham with a long reach, enabling to reach and get Hennig out quickly. What a right hand when Wyndham hits the ring. Took Benoit down. Yeah. Again, Wyndham using his weight oh, advantage to sign one, two. And his speed. And his speed, you're right, Bray. A two count. This all goes back like we talked about earlier to the belt that was used in the second match at Super Brawl. Around the throat of Malenko that propelled Wyndham and Hennig for the championship. One, two. And WCW officials all too quick to sign this one with Lumberjack with belts because it is uncensored. This is the one event of the year that things like this occur. You'll remember the team of Wyndham and Hennig really were not that uh, happy about having to the tag titles so quickly on the line. They wanted to call the shot, so to speak. And what are the Lumberjacks all around the ring? They're not involved anything personal in this match, but they're having a great time. They can't wait to start whipping people. Well, you know, Arn Anderson's having a great time. He's been wanting to get involved in, in some sort of action for a long time. Not able to wrestle anymore. 
Unable to get involved, and if he can strap someone, so be it. He ducked. Oh. Benoit and a German suplex. Cracked the back of the neck of Hennig hard on the center of the ring. Last ditch effort by Benoit. Hit the German suplex, released it. Now trying to make his way to the corner and get the fresh man Malenko into the ring, and there's the tag. Dean Malenko with a head of steam. Deck Wyndham still has the hair of Hennig. We've got all four at it now. Malenko held his ground and runs into the boot, and then a kick, and then Hennig. Blinding, Moon is Hennig Plex. But Malenko, Malenko, other side. One, two. No, no, no. Wyndham bar barely there in time, but he didn't get out. Kurt Hennig got himself out of that one. And on the outside, through all of that, Overly possibly he's got to make the turn. Yeah, but it's a long way from Kentucky to Texas. Out goes Benoit again. But he's got him. He's got Henning Hook. Henning can't get to the ropes. And Barry Wyndham just hauled off and clobbered him. Run behind. Benoit's been thrown out two times in a row now. He's been severely whipped. It broke down momentarily. Wyndham ducks low. Oh, boy. Outside now. Stomping as Anderson comes over to clear it out just in time. Roll the man in. Tough matchup, like we anticipated. Barry Wyndham goes right to the back. Same spot of the body that was whacked on the outside that hit so hard when he fell on the outside. So once again, Barry Wyndham, very smart strategy employed here, and here comes. You see on the right side there, the, foot, the head, and Lingo goes down again. Why they're the tag team champions of the world. Man's trying to get Benoit Malenko to rally back here. But oh boy, you're not going to find a better vertical suplex than that. Malenko escaped. And notice how Wyndham just floated over. He's gifted. Yes, he is. Remember when Barry Wyndham first started in this sport? And I remember when he started walking. And how we were all amazed that he was so big. At a very young age he started and so talented. His father, Black Jack Mulligan, brought him in. And that fighting spirit that he gave Barry Wyndham combined with his talent. And together now with Kurt Henning, the World Tag Team Champ. Henning puts on his labor. And the good thing about it was the way he put it out. He took Malenko down. He didn't let Malenko have any time to stand or find his way around the ring. He took him down. Laid on top of him. He's cutting off all his air. That's how the sleeper should be applied. Shut up, Anderson. Two feet. Come on, Two feet, dude. Reach, 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 reach. One. There you go. Two feet. He's going to come up short. Arn Anderson looking on. Referee Randy Anderson checking with Malenko, who's trying to do anything within his power to get Shut back up, up to a critical base. Arne Shut Anderson up, Anderson! Looking on. He's, he's telling Malenko how close he is to the ropes. He kept saying two feet. That's all you need to reach two feet, and you can get this hold off with a break. Well, that's Horseman talking to Horseman. That's his heads-up work. That's what it is. Sleeper hold that time. Yeah. Cheap shot by Wyndham. Taking advantage of the fact that Malenko's hooked in the corner of the opposition. And now he purposely threw Malenko down to the floor so that the Lumberjacks can just rip away. And Arn Anderson over as quickly as he could. Arn Anderson looking around saying, what's the matter with you guys? But in reality, they're doing their job. And as a result, Dean Malenko's in trouble here. And a very competent tag made that time by Wyndham and Henning. And the rest, once again, Barry Wyndham. His lariats are awesome. He just flies through the air. One, two. Couldn't hold Dean Malenko down. Something about that extra impact when you leave your feet and you're six foot five, six foot six, and near 300 pounds when you deliver that clothesline. 
You know, something needs to be said, and I'm sure we'll say it even again before the second half is over, about the athleticism of all these guys involved in these matches tonight. Absorbing every type of object that you can in that triangle match. You don't like the that. cruiserweight That's title tough. match that we've seen in the part of street fighting. And this lumberjack match, and guys keep kicking out and coming back. And, and we know, still have a dog collar match. Yes, and a, and a cage Stop. match and with Bob Wire. You, you just don't, you don't develop the skill overnight. It takes a lot of hard work. A pick up here. Malenko shoves. Put the man. Who caught him as he went in hard with that back elbow and turns it into a pickup. Look at Dean Malenko on his way down. That's all he could do. He knew that when he got picked up in the air, he knew he was going to get dumped. He just had to pull out everything. He just started smacking away. Tried to fight off Wyndham. Still suffered the effects of the backdrop suplex from BW. Two fresh men on the apron in Benoit and Hennig. Gary quickly pulls up. Malenko trying to slide over. He'll make a tag. Will Berry and tag to Benoit. And you saw, you know, Henning put the bricks on. Because Benoit's in. And he's fresh. Is he ever? And he's hot. He's the crippler. And he's taking charge of this match. Now the legal men are paired off on opposite sides here, I do believe that would be Hennig and Benoit. But you can't go outside the rest, there's no rest out there. No rest at all, Brain, you're right. Into the ropes. Malenko got the boot in. Hennig fighting. There's a belt in the ring, is that Barry Windham's belt? Benoit just took it off Barry Windham. A fight on the outside. And some of the lumberjacks started to fight amongst themselves as well. Well, take a real player with something like this. In the window, trying to shield people off his brother, it appears. But still legal outside. in the ring is Kurt Hennig and Malenko, right, Tony? I believe it's Benoit and Kurt Hennig. Hennig just has a belt wrapped around his hand, and he just knocked out first Malenko, and now Anderson. He just took him off the ring apron. He's in the tire iron. He's coming over the tire iron. about calling triple a kurt hennig's out i mean and he's the legal man at barry windham at least we we believe so and barry windham fights off now malenko malenko tried to hook that belt around the neck of windham there's been one number six champions of the world. Have there ever been more deserving champions than the consummate athletes like a Dean Malenko and a Chris Benoit? Well, you're one-sided. Yes, I am. Well, then I can be too. I think a gold belt around the waist of a Chris Benoit is long overdue. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? And the same can be said for Dean Malenko. The horsemen have garnered the gold in their first attempt tonight here on Uncensored 1999. Boy, what a short reign as World Tag Team Champion. How long was it, Mike, they've had the title? Well, let's see, since Super Brawl, so just over three weeks, I guess. And that's how it is. That's not going to sit good with Wyndham and Hennig. See Henny getting up, he's wrapping that belt around his fist. Meanwhile, outside, the Lumberjacks are wailing away at Big Barry Windham. Malenko picks him up, turns him around, catches one right to the temple. Now, he's out here as far as I'm concerned. He nails Aaron Anderson. Anderson's had enough. He reaches into his Levi suit, pulls out his attire iron. It's Kurt Hennig from behind, horseman style and fortress style. Benoit all the way across the ring, perches himself, takes off all the way across, lands into the side of Kurt Hennig. Pee Wee Anderson in position for the one, two, three, and we got new tag team champions. It was a spectacular headbutt, swan dive, but it was really academic after that. The tire iron had done its work, so to speak. Just say iron. <laughs> 